Okay, we're back. This is Dave Vellante. I'm with Wikibon. I'm here with my co-host, Jeff Kelly. This is theCUBE. We're at the MIT Information Quality Symposium, a symposium really targeted toward chief data officers and the folks that actually implement, the practitioners that are implementing data governance and data quality within their organizations. Data quality is a topic that is really not discussed, mu discussed much, frankly, at a lot of the big data tech shows that we go to, the Hadoop Worlds and the Stratas and the Hadoop Summits. It's you know, a lot of technology, uh, you know, a lot of, you know, how you bring real time to that, to that world. Uh, another topic that's just recently really hit the big data world is security. Uh, our good friend Eli Khan is here. Eli's an executive at Squirrel. Squirrel's a company that was born out of the NSA. Uh, they're really popularizing, commercializing the Accumulo database and bringing uh, application development environments to that world and uh, doing a great job there and really trying to move the needle in the big data world. So Eli, welcome back to theCUBE, good to see you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, so I information quality is, as I said, something that's not talked a lot about, but you're uh, in the healthcare industry for sure, you, you're dealing with a lot of other you know, financial services, clearly government, and really beginning to commercialize a, a Cumulo. So one of the reasons why we wanted you guys here is to talk a little bit about, because I think there are real parallels between what you're doing with Squirrel and what this crowd is doing with information quality. So I wonder if you could talk about that a little bit. Yeah, data quality was a huge issue that we saw inside the intelligence community, which really led to the development of Accumulo. Um, and uh, you can think of data quality in a few different ways, at least that's the way we think about it. One is simply getting access to the data that you need and secondarily, making sure that data is clean. So inside the intelligence community uh, back in the, the mid-2000s, uh, what, what those folks were facing was many stovepipe databases and stovepiped applications on top of those databases. So an intelligence analyst sitting inside the NSA or CIA had great difficulty in committing queries that could search across all of these databases and really get the information that they needed. So those, those silo databases were created for a number of reasons. Some of them were just the data was so big they needed to segment them in separate databases. But a lot of it was also due to security reasons. They were putting different types of classified material in different types of databases, US persons versus foreign persons data in different set, sets of databases, which is certainly an issue that we've all read about uh, a lot in, in the news over the last month or so. Uh, so Accumulo was created to really break down those stovepipes and allow folks to securely query across all the data that was available, available to them based on the, their authorizations within the organization and provide a scalable platform where they could collapse up to you know, tens of petabytes of information on a single platform. So talk a little bit about from an organizational standpoint, because, um, you know, <laughs> Big government agencies aren't the only ones dealing with this problem. You go look around at banks, insurance companies, healthcare organizations. Y what you just described applies to all of those. What are some of the organizational considerations that, that you see in terms of actually going from that stovepipe world? There's, t there's the te technology piece, which Cumulo is a great example of allowing fine grained security so you can actually have data in there and have the control so that the wrong person is not getting to the, to the data that you don't want them to. But there are other organizational aspects around that. People sometimes don't want to give up their data. Um, you know, there's obviously security concerns. I wonder if you could talk about that a little bit. Yeah, I mean, that's, I think uh, inside the big data space, you often don't hear about the change management and the cultural transition that needs to happen with an organization to go from these stovepiped databases into a platform where all your data sits. This definitely took the intelligence community a long time to really get their heads around and to put in place the formal organizational policies that really enabled this change, enabled folks to take all this data in a single platform and put, making sure from a security standpoint that these logical separations of the data were strong enough where you could mix data with different security requirements on the same platform. So uh, you know, there's a huge change management piece you know, making sure the stakeholders are comfortable with these security uh, security requirements and security changes, and then actually implementing the technology is is actually in some ways an easier 
process than, than some of the, the change management pieces. Yeah, that's uh, precisely what we heard from uh, Dot Tron from the uh, Veterans Affairs uh, Veteran Affairs this morning, um, talking about some of the cultural challenges are, are often harder than the, the technology challenges. And he one of the things he talked about to really enable the um, development of uh, what he's trying to do at the VA in terms of uh, creating a customer-centric view uh, or workflow process uh, and data view for, for their stakeholders internally was strategic communication. That is, mm. tailor your communication as you're selling your project internally t t to different stakeholders. You've got to tailor your communication to those stakeholders. So if it's more of a yep. business person, uh, you've got to speak in a language that they understand and speak to the priorities that they have versus an IT person where you've got to speak in a more technical language um, so that they're cha they feel challenged in, the, in terms of the work that's uh, going to be entailed uh, for them. Uh, talk a little bit about how you help customers tackle that problem, the communication problem as you're, as you're implementing the technology to make sure that the uh, right people are on board and that the, um, the stakeholders are, uh, understand what's, what's, uh, what the process is going to entail. Yeah. So I think the most effective way of tackling that problem is through examples of excellence. So uh, inside the intelligence community, uh, we started small with small pilots demonstrated that things could work on a small scale, uh, really put that pilot out there as an example of excellence and build momentum behind that. So start small and scale big. And we're seeing a, a number of other federal agencies starting to adopt this approach. Uh, we're really excited about the, the work that is going to begin soon inside the National Institute of Health and, and their National Cancer Institute. They recently put out uh, uh, an RFP around the development of a cancer genomics cloud. So pulling together cancer genomics data from across various research institutions, from across the NIH and HHS also, and pull that all into a central cloud that it brings the analytics to the data. You know, so right now the way it works is that um, a lot of times research organizations will share data with each other on a, on a one-off basis uh, but it's not effective from either a computing perspective or from a data quality perspective. Uh, so what they're looking to do is bring all this data into a single cloud, uh, utilize things like MapReduce and custom tools to refine that data into a uh, standardized format that can be used widely across the, the larger research institution and then utilize the economies of scale associated with cloud computing to really bring that computational power to the data and enable more researchers to be able to access really big data sets. So this is a, this is a really exciting initiative that uh, you know, hopefully we'll, we'll be involved in. So you guys just came off of the, uh, the Hadoop Summit. We saw you there. Um, you had a good presence there. Talk about that a little bit. How, how was that show for you? It was amazing. It was our, uh, our first big show, and yeah. uh, we were really excited with the buzz. Um, you know, the, a number of the Hadoop sh distributors uh, were sending clients over to us to come talk to us, uh, you know, because a lot of folks are now talking about the need for secure real-time analytics, and that combination of security and real-time analytics is is something that not a lot of folks can provide. So yeah, it's you know, not out of the box of, of the distro, is it? No, it's <laughs> not out of the box. And you know, a lot of what we do is some of the, the softer pieces, it, translating uh, an organization's security policies into fine-grained access controls is not just a simply automatic process. It takes uh, some, uh, some soft skills, too, to figure out how to do that in, in, the, be in, a, in, the, in a, the best way. So, it was really cool to see uh, these folks coming to us uh, asking about how to do this in, in a secure manner. So uh, I think the, the momentum around the concept of Hadoop plus security is really starting to grow. Yeah, I, I, it, it, was, it struck me, I mean, having been doing this now for a few years, how much more discussion about security there was, even, even from, say, February at the Strata event to the, the, the Hadoop Summit show in June. Yep. Um, major emphasis. I'd say it was one of the top two or three topics that, that came up there. Yeah. And you know, your point about fine-grained security, we did a great video with Adam Fuchs, who's the CTO at Squirrel. Uh, he did a little chalk talk uh, at the Wikibon offices. So you can find that video on, on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash siliconangle. It happens to be right now up on the uh, Squirrel site at, at squirrel.com, it's S-Q-R-R-L.com. It's, it's a how-to, fine-grained security for big data. And Adam really described from a practitioner's perspective how you should architect that. So 
He's actually done a number of these for us. We love talking to you guys because you, you had your hands in it deep you know, <laughs> within the intelligence community, and now you're sort of sharing that knowledge and obviously you know, uh, uh, commercializing your products as well. So how's that going? You guys had a, a product launch early, th early this year of Squirrel Enterprise. How's the uptake going? What are you seeing in the ecosystem and, and the community? Yeah, so uh, we're, we're in production and a, a good number of clients now. Um, and you know, a lot of these clients, they had been utilizing Hadoop primarily in a sandbox environment, and they realized that in order to take it into production and put the type of data into their cluster that they wanted to put in there, they needed this concept of data-centric security. So um, you know, a lot of folks are starting to talk about security and Hadoop. Uh, I think a lot of that discussion is still about perimeter security and how to properly authenticate and authorize people into your Hadoop cluster. Um, I don't think there's enough discussion yet still about you know, what we call d data centric or cell level security and really bringing the security to the, the data itself, which we think, and it's been our experience, is actually the most effective way to, uh, to, secure, to secure data in a, in a large Hadoop cluster. You need both, uh, but uh, you know, primer security is not enough. Yeah, and people talk about, when you really talk about security, they talk about you know, the levels of granularity, um, but there's a lot of nuance there in terms of how to get there, and that's really where you guys have a substantial amount of expertise. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, th I think the, the question of that more granular security is going to increase, increasingly be asked as you know, things like uh, Yarn, for instance, develops and is implemented Yarn, which, which really enables Hadoop to become a multi-application platform. So um, when, when Hadoop is a single application platform and you've got one group of users, maybe that perimeter type uh, controls is all you need, but when you've got multiple applications potentially running on Hadoop and you've got uh, users from different departments with different levels of authorization r running uh, jobs on the same cluster, that's when you've really got to start to get to that fine grained level of security. Um, I wonder, do you, do you agree with that assessment and, and how, do you, how do you see kind of Yarn and the maturation of Hadoop as a platform, as a multi-application platform impacting uh, your business and what you do and the value proposition that uh, Squirrel brings? We're, we're, we're really excited about Yarn. Um, you know, the way that we view Yarn is that, uh, like you said, it's going to support development of multiple applications on top of a Hadoop cluster. And that's, that's really what we're all about. We're all about creating an app store environment on top of, on top of Hadoop. So uh, these cell level security controls, what they really do is enable multi-tenancy. Uh, it allows you to pull lots of different data sets onto a single platform and then expose those data sets to end users and to applications that have many different types of authorization. So uh, if you want to create that app store environment, Yarn's going to be critical and uh, data-centric security is going to be critical. Mm -hmm. So uh, you know, here at this show, we've, we've got practitioners from the federal government. We've got uh, uh, healthcare and financial services well represented. Um, are those, uh, are there, do you see some common threads uh, among those three industries in terms of their need for security, data quality, data governance? Um, are, the, are those kind of, are you seeing this in terms of perhaps interest in Squirrel, as, as some of the industries that are really focused on this question of data quality and security? Those are, those are our key verticals too. Uh, so the intersection of uh, diverse user bases such as research oriented uh, verticals like healthcare plus really big data, and government, financial, and healthcare certainly have really big data are, are in our sweet spot. So there's a, you know, the financial industry, they certainly place a premium on security just because of the cybersecurity threats that they face. Um, you know, probably less of a collaborative community than, a, you know, say, a healthcare or even like an intelligence community environment, but because they place such a premium on security and, and because they have such important regulations and rules about how stakeholders inside a large multinational bank can communicate and how data can flow within that bank. Those are other reasons why uh, a data-centric security approach would be really important inside, inside of financial services companies. And, and you know, at Squirrel, you, you're helping customers kind of understand that workflow and actually program these models so that they can understand who, who has access to what and when uh, under what circumstances, et cetera. Because that, I can imagine, uh, just trying to picture that at a big organization mm. on, a, on a whiteboard, has got to be, uh, there's a lot of lines moving in a lot of different directions. Um, is, that, is that something you help, you're helping uh, customers work through? Yeah, we have some, we have some, unnecess uh, some unfortunately complex spaghetti diagrams <laughs> about how the security stuff works. 
But you know, really some of our secret sauce is in uh, what we call our policy engine. So uh, when we sit down with an organization, we will work through and look at their existing information security policies, help them translate those into machine readable policies that then can be utilized for as an automatic labeling process on the data. So as data is ingested, we are automatically labeling those pieces of data with, with very fine-grained security rules about who can touch individual pieces of data. And this is becoming more and more important. Uh, there's a, a number of rules that have come out of the Affordable Care Act most recently that uh, have, our, have our phones ringing off the hook with healthcare CIOs that are, need to figure out how to comply with them. And one of the ways that they're going to need to comply with them is via these fine, fine grain access controls. You know, for example, uh, doctor's notes now have very specific requirements about who can touch them and, uh, and, uh, and, and, and of course that data is uh, unstructured data, so uh, applying those fine grain access controls to that unstructured data is, uh, is what cell level security was invented to do. Mm -hmm. So you guys just did another raise, um, which, is, which is interesting. So what would you raise, another, uh, let's see. I, I forget the numbers. So can you share those with us, or have you announced it yet? Yeah, haven't haven't quite announced it yet. Okay. Uh, we're, we're in the the midst of our Series A right now. You know, we'll probably be doing an announcement uh, pretty shortly. But, okay. Uh, yeah. So nothing formal yet. Okay. So, but 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 so you guys are doing well, right? I mean, you get, you're you're going. And it's hard right now. The the the, the funding climate has changed, and uh, there's, because there's a glut of companies looking for Series A. So you guys are doing well. You got a new CEO that's really you know out of the the public public uh, company world. So, so talk a little bit about your your business, the momentum. You know, what else is going on there? Yeah, like everyone else, we're we're hiring like crazy, uh, and but we've been fairly successful so far. So, you know, our team's up to about 20 folks. So it's it's starting to feel like a, a real company here. We're no longer just a, a small startup. But uh, the the plans for the company are to continue to expand in our key verticals: uh, healthcare, government, finance, telecommunications. You know, we're very strong in a couple of use cases right now, uh, cybersecurity being one of them, and helping companies build out a big data security analytics program, basically being that secure data store where they can dump all of their security information into and build exploratory analytical applications on top of. You know, one of the other uh, use cases that we're, we're starting to get really deep in is in healthcare analytics and ingesting electronic health records, and other administrative research clinical data into a single system and looking f for patterns in that data that can help predict uh, clinical diagnoses and uh, help improve overall healthcare uh, services. That's a really interesting question um, around the EMRs or EHRs, depending on the lexicon you want to use. Um, you know, companies like Cerner and Epic are, are you know, kind of really uh, doing very well now because of the Affordable Care Act and some of the uh, requirements in there to adopt EHRs. But traditionally, uh, my understanding is that healthcare systems uh, are very proprietary, don't talk well with one another. How is that impacting the ability of uh, companies like yours and technologies like yours to bring all that data in, into a single repository to, to really leverage, so allow, to allow people to use th that data for analytics? Is that a, a, an extra barrier that needs to be overcome in the healthcare world? Yeah, I'd say most of the, the healthcare folks that we've talked to so far are primarily greenfield opportunities in that you know they're still at the uh, pilot stages of their Hadoop deployments, uh, which is great because we can come in there during these early stages and help properly craft security requirements and security approaches on top of that Hadoop cluster. So I think there's tons of room for growth of Hadoop adoption in the healthcare space. I think these new requirements uh, uh, around electronic health records is only going to increase the need for solutions like Hadoop. Mm. Yeah, I mean, it's in, and really, if you think about the end result, I mean, how this all translates to helping, you know, in the case of healthcare, the patient. I mean, I think we can all relate to, you know, meeting with our doctor or nurses and them not having the right information or asking for information that I just gave to someone else. Um, and, and that happens for a variety of reasons. There's data quality issues, there's mm -hmm. potentially security issues that don't allow sharing of the data. Um, so the, the implications for the patient, the end user or customer, for lack of a better term, uh, could be significant. Yeah, I mean, let me give you a, one real quick example of how, how a, a big data solution in healthcare might work. So um, uh, let's say you ha uh, have a relative that was diagnosed with diabetes. Uh, you could utilize a, a Cumulo-based solution 
to look for the indicators that uh, led to that uh, diagnosis. You know, what are the, the, the pieces of data in their electronic health record and in other surrounding data sets that, uh, that could be attributed or correlated with that diabetes diagnosis. Now, once we've established that pattern, let's begin looking for that across the healthcare network and see if there are undiagnosed cases of diabetes based on that pattern recognition. So, you know, those are the types of things that, uh, that we're looking at now and I think are gonna become more and more prevalent inside the healthcare space. Yeah, it just feels like the whole discussion is you know, you wind at your back, as they say. So, I mean, I think your timing's been good. You guys got the technology chops and now you're building out the organization. You've got adult supervision, which is key. And, uh, and, and really excited for the future of, of Accumulo and, and Squirrel. So, Eli, really thanks for coming by. You know, always a pleasure. You guys have the greatest perspective, so we'd love to tap your, your knowledge and share it with our audience. I so really appreciate it. My pleasure. Thanks. All right, good to see you again. Thank All you. right, take care. Thanks. All right, keep it right there, everybody. We'll be right back with Tony O'Brien, who's uh, with the Sheffield Business School. This is theCUBE. We're at MIT for the next two days. We'll be right back. <laughs>